Hi, Dr. J here with a continuing discussion about statistics. In a previous video, it should be linked up here, we were discussing about statistics sometimes being estimators when their goal is to estimate a population parameter. In the video right now, we will discuss properties of statistics, in particular their standard error, and we'll discuss when the estimators sometimes have properties called unbiased and consistent. At the end of the video today, we will provide a, an example based on the binomial distribution and show the context of being unbiased and consistent in the context of a binomial estimator of the probability of success. To start with, let's talk about a standard error. So a standard error is just the standard deviation of a statistic when we consider the data to be random. As a reminder, the notation that we have here, we have the parameter theta with a hat over it. That parameter theta is a population parameter and the hat or caret over top of it provides an indication that this uh, statistic that we have is an estimator of that population parameter. So really, that theta with the hat on top is a function of the data and the data are random. So the standard error then, uh, we can think about as the standard deviation of the test statistic and we're going to show an example here looking at the sample mean. So if we have a population, call it xi, so x1 up to some xn, and the variance of all those observations or all those random variables is all sigma squared, then we can take a look at what the variability or the variance in the sample mean is. So here's the variance of the sample mean. We'll just plug in the definition for the sample mean. Right, the sample mean is just the average of all the observations. That constant 1 over n can be pulled out of the variance, and when we do, we need to square it. Now we have the sum. Uh, we did two steps there. The second step we did is that the variance of the sum is the sum of the variance because these xi are all independent. The variance of each of the individual xi's is just sigma squared, and so we plug that in, but now we sum over n observations, so we will have n sigma squared, and then one of those n's will cancel, and we will end up with sigma squared divided by n. So that's the variance of the statistic, but we can calculate the standard deviation by simply taking the square root of that variance, and we find that the standard deviation is sigma divided by square root of n. That is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. And because that's the standard deviation of the statistic, we call that the standard error. Thus, the standard error of the sample mean is sigma divided by the square root of n. All right, so let's talk about being unbiased. Now we have to move from just talking about a statistic to talking about an estimator. So there is an estimator, in this case, for a population parameter theta. That estimator is this theta hat. The true population parameter is theta. And it's called, this estimator is called unbiased if the expectation of the estimator when we're thinking about the data as being random is equal to that population parameter. So we have this expectation of the estimator is equal to the population parameter that it is trying to estimate, then it is unbiased. If we take a look at our sample mean, we can calculate the expectation when we have a population that has a common mean mu. We'll just plug in first the definition of that sample mean, so we have 1 over n times the summation of the xi's. We can pull out that 1 over n when we do, because it's an expectation, we don't have to square it. So we pull it out, and then we also do the next step where we have the sum uh, rather, the expectation of the sum is the sum of the expectations. Each of the individual expectations is just mu. We sum that n times, but then we divide by n, and therefore we have mu. Thus, the sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the sample uh, of the population mean. And similarly, we have a result for the sample variance defined in the previous video, and that sample variance is an unbiased estimator of the population variance sigma squared. So that's what it means to be unbiased. Now, unbiased sounds like a great property to have. It's really not actually that important. And in some cases, you might actually prefer a biased estimator. And we'll talk about that in videos down the way. What's probably more important than being unbiased is for an estimator to be consistent. So we have the same structure. We have this estimator theta hat. It's really a uh, function of a sample x. And we're now going to introduce the subscript n just to get this idea that the n is going to change. So the property of consistency, or an estimator being consistent, is what occurs when we get a larger and larger and larger sample size. Thus, we need the explicit subscript n. 
So if an estimator is consistent for a particular population parameter theta, if the probability of its sampling error of any magnitude converges to zero uh, as the sample size n increases to infinity. Right? So written mathematically, it looks like this. The probability of an error, so we have the absolute value of the test statistic or the, te the estimator minus the true population parameter, the absolute value of that quantity being greater than epsilon, right? That E looking symbol. So that's an error, right? If that occurs, if that event occurs, that's an error. So we have the probability of that event. That probability goes to zero as the sample size n goes to infinity. And now this has to be true for any epsilon greater than zero. And so that just tells us that the probability of being too far away from the true value goes down as the sample size goes to infinity. As an example, we can look at the sample mean. Uh, we already derived the standard error for the sample mean. Well, we did also did the sample, or we did the variance of that sample mean. It was sigma squared divided by n. And it turns out that you can write down what's the probability that that sample mean is too far away from the population mean mu. We can use something called Chebyshev's inequality, and I don't need to go into detail on this video, but you can go ahead and take a look at those. And what you'll find here is that you get the ratio sigma squared over n divided by epsilon squared. And now because n is going to infinity, this quantity goes to zero, and therefore this probability that we said goes to zero does in fact go to zero, and therefore the sample mean is consistent for the population mean. All right, let's get to that binomial example that I uh, foreshadowed earlier on. The binomial distribution, as a reminder, is a distribution that could model, say, uh, rolls of a die. Say we're interested in calculating the probability uh, of a one, but for some reason we don't know it, like uh, it's a tricky die or something like that. And so what we can do instead is that we can just flip the die a whole bunch of times, and then we can record how many times it shows up a one. And if we take the ratio of the number of times that it showed up one divided by the number of times that we rolled the die, we can uh, record the proportion of successes, and that proportion will be an estimator of the true population of success. So said mathematically, our estimator, theta hat, which is now y divided by n, that is an estimator of the population probability of success theta. And now we're interested in the properties of this estimator. Is it unbiased? Is it uh, consistent? Okay, and so we need to calculate the expectation. We have the expectation of our estimator. We just plug in the definition, that's y divided by n. We can pull out the one over n outside of the expectation. So we just have one over n times the expectation of y. If you remember your binomial distributions, you'll know that the expectation here is n times p times one minus p. Uh, sorry, I did the variance. If you remember your ex if you remember your expectations for a binomial, it is n times theta. So we have that, the n's will cancel, and we'll just get theta. And therefore, this y over n estimator is an unbiased estimator of the population parameter theta. Now the next step is to think about whether or not it's consistent. For that, we're gonna need to have the variance of this estimator. So we calculate the variance here of the estimator theta hat. We just plug in the definition for theta hat, that's y over n. We can pull out the one over n because it's coming outside of a variance, we have to square it. So we get one over n squared times the variance of y. The variance of y for this binomial is n times theta times one minus theta. One of those n's will cancel and we will end up with theta times one minus theta divided by n. All right, so we've gotten here the, var the variance of the estimator. We can calculate the standard error by taking the square root. So we just have the square root of theta uh, times one minus theta over n. So that's the standard error. Now the last question is, is it consistent? And it turns out that again, because it's unbiased and because the standard error decreases uh, with n, we have that it's unbiased, that it's consistent through the same way we did with the sample mean, that is via using Chebyshev's inequality. And so I don't do the uh, math here, but you can do the math on your own and you can show that in fact, this estimator is consistent. All right. so. Through the last three videos, we talked about the field of statistics, what a statistic actually is. We talked about statistics having a property called a standard error. We talked about statistics sometimes being estimators of population parameters. 
And when they are, then we can talk about whether or not they have the properties of being unbiased and being consistent. Now there is another video in this series, and that video just goes on to talk about graphical statistics very briefly. So the next video in this series is going to talk about graphical statistics, and I hope to catch you there.